Uvalde Radio, redefining radio in Uvalde, Texas. Coverage from the Texas Regional Radio Music Awards is presented by Bottle and Bag Liquor and Guns, DKM Enterprises, Encina Properties, First State Bank of Uvalde, Julian's, Texas Farm Store, Texas Hill Country River Region, Uvalco Supply, and the Uvalde Convention and Visitors Bureau. Biggest nights in Texas country at the 10th annual Texas Regional Radio Music Awards with UvaldiRadio.net. It's UvaldiRadio.net. I'm Robert Miguel. We are live, virtually live, at the 10th annual T3R Awards. That's the Texas Regional Radio Music Awards. And uh, our live coverage is brought to you by Texas Farm Store, DKM Enterprises, Encina Properties, Uvalde Convention Visitors Bureau, Visit UvaldeCounty.com, First State Bank of Uvalde, uh, Bottle and Bag Liquor and Guns, Julian's Uvalco Supply, and Cadillac Western Wear. Cadillac Western Wear are the fine uh, providers of my virtual blue carpet outfit. So joining us here on the blue carpet, Mr. Sam Cox of Ragland. What's going on, man? I said, I said you're from Ragland. Yeah. <laughs> man, so... Sam, it's good to, good to talk to you. Good to have you here virtually on our blue carpet. Yeah. How are you feeling about this gala event? Man, it's pretty cool, honestly. <laughs> um, I've seen a lot of familiar faces. No. <laughs> it's, it's crazy, man. It's just, it is what it is. It's, uh, 
don't know. I, I'm just we're glad to have been a part of it. I, I think I think what you just said sums up 2020. It is what it is. Yeah. That should it be our. Is, dude. That's the hashtag. The punches, man. So okay, so obviously, uh, Sam, you're in the band, uh, band duo, whatever you want to call it, Ragland. However, some things have changed in the Ragland camp. But um, yeah. you, you and your wife have this cool group. Um, where is where's Autumn right now? Well, so um, long story short, so um, you know, Ragland was. I mean, we, you know, kind of toured for you know four or five years or so. But over that four or five years, Autumn, I think at the beginning of this. Uh, I can't. I, you know, I call it pandemic. I, I hate calling it that, but just this craziness. Uh, whenever we went in quarantine, I guess she kind of she really realized how much she needed a break off the road, and we uh, we had a we we got a, a foster kid in the midst of you know, staying uh, you know kind of home for a while, and and uh, come you know summer at the beginning of summer, she decided that she wanted to really just take a long break from the road. So um, I had kind of revamped. I guess you'd call it my my old solo project and um so that's where that's where she's at she's she's at home taking a huge break off the road and um just kind of taking some time to write and reevaluate and um, be mom for a little bit and you know so now we just play that. we just played the Raglan song uh, "Love Liquor" and "A Place to Die," which got a lot of radio play here on Uvalde Radio right. net and and then it was kind of you know uh, peaked you know whenever you guys actually came to town in the spring right. Friday March thirteenth the day the music died literally because that's when right. the world. <laughs> No joke. That was like our final. Like, yeah. okay, no joke. So, whenever we were sitting in the quarantine, that was our last show that we had played, yeah. and we had streamed the whole live thing. And so, we watched the front, the, the whole thing from front to back, probably seven or eight times throughout that whole uh, quarantine. Because we were like, man, this stinks. But it was the last show that we had played, so we were kind of just watching it like the good old days. So, well, man, well, we're yeah. glad that Uvalde is the good old days for Raglan. So that's cool, man. <laughs> Well, yeah, no, for sure. So, so things have changed. Raglan's kind of taken it. What now? Would you call this a breakup, a hiatus? What's what's the story officially for those who love Ragland? What's the word there? The official word? Man, I call it a just indefinite hiatus. Okay. Um, we we will definitely be playing together more, and we're still writing together and stuff. But um, Autumn's kind of just uh, taking it different route i guess um and she's wanting to slow down for a while and like i said i'm i'm not really trying to slow down i i really want to just keep going and so that's when i just kind of started to do my own solo thing and uh again and you know so i, I hiatus i guess that you know yeah yeah well well that's cool now you got yeah. the return of the sam cox band so for those who only know ragland um and are and sam cox band is a brand new thing uh sum up what you're doing currently now in in your uh, your current band I mean, we're just uh, we're in the middle of the studio right now, put on working on a new record. Uh, we just uh, we put out a new single called "Losing Someone." Um, and then, uh, as far as I mean, the differences, I guess. I mean, Raglan is a lot more. Um, you know, the partnership of Raglan was Autumn's lyrics with my instrumentals, I guess. But um, you know, Sam Cox band is just a little bit more on the blues rock. Just a lot more distortion than Raglan had. You know, mm-hmm. the Raglan didn't have any distortion at all. You know, it was fiddle, acoustic, you know, drums, you know, that kind of stuff. And uh, so this is just um, a little bit more rock and roll. And um, yeah, <laughs> I guess it's the new, the new record coming out. So, uh, you know, we're just looking forward to everybody hearing it, I guess. Well, like you said, man, you got the new single called Losing Someone. Uh, we're going to play that here in a minute. But let's go back to Raglan because we are celebrating the 2019 achievements of the Texas yeah. Regional Radio, you know, uh, nominees and whatnot. Ragland, before the indefinite right. hiatus, uh, was in fact nominated for a new duo group slash band of the year. Now, you had some really, really stiff competition up in there. Uh, let me see the, the uh, list of nominees. Abe Mack Band, uh, Chad Cook Band, Darren Morris Band, Isaac Jacob Band, and Ragland. Now, of note, Ragland, the only artist that didn't have the word band in there. How'd you feel about that? <laughs> <laughs> it was weird because we were the only non-solo with a band, you know, right. whatever. But, I mean, but it was honestly, dude, it was a whole, it was a really good category. We've gotten an opportunity to share stage with, like, all but one of those guys. And, uh, yeah, we love all of them. So we, we're just stoked to even be part of the category. And whoever won it got it. And, you know, we, uh, I don't know. It, it, was, it was a good, I, it was my favorite category because it was just kind of like, I love all these artists. And so it was really cool. I think it's interesting that, you know, all the groups in that uh, category have very, very distinct sounds. So um, it got just interesting that it was really, uh, I think, it just a good 
representation right. of the, the diversity within that Texas country red dirt scene. Um, what, right. what, what, what would you say if you had to pick one of your favorite acts that were in the competition with you? Who, who would you go to? Man, I'd probably have to say Isaac, just because we've um, we've probably played a dozen shows with Isaac. We've uh, we cut our teeth a lot with that dude around the San Antonio area. Mm-hmm. You know, when we were kind of first starting out and stuff, and uh, we love that guy for sure. So it has to be Isaac. Second would probably have to be Chad Cook. They're just really good songwriters. Well, very that good. Band and, is, so. and and of course, Chad Cook did win the category. So um, yeah, much deserved. But man, it was cool that you guys got nominated. And hey, man, now you know I think you can still qualify for next year. Plus, you'll have Sam Cox Band, which you know who knows. Yeah. You guys might be there again. What? Um. Okay. Okay. We got to get back in the mindset of the awards again. It's a gala event. We're live on the blue carpet in honor of uh, law enforcement. <laughs> at the now, Sam, what are you wearing? What is your fashion sense right now at this uh, gala event? Dude. Okay. So let's see. I've got this. It better not be a Whataburger it's T-shirt. <laughs> it's all black, man. My tie's black. My shoes are black. My pants are black, and. Um, my wife would be like, you're not wearing all black, but I'd be like, watch me. So, and this is, I'm not really there, so I can wear whatever I want. I, I like uh, that. You're like, hey, so. lady, you get the band name, I get to wear what I want. That's the deal. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly, yeah. We, at the last award show, she uh, we went and she picked, helped, helped me pick out my outfit, and I was like, oh my gosh. Not that I didn't like it or anything, but, uh, you know, this time it's all black. I just decided to pick, so... If the award show would have gone um, on as planned, you guys were part of the Future Faces. You were going to perform at that as well, too. Um, and, of course, that that would have meant that uh, Autumn would have shown up and also probably your fiddle player, too. Um, yeah. Seeing that you have a couple of girls in the band, were they getting all excited about what fashion? What, were they going to wear something fancy? And- oh, my gosh. We're- Indeed, Autumn still has a, uh, <laughs> she has a dress in her closet that she never... That was for the Future Faces show, uh-huh. and uh, and she never she never even got to wear it. So she'll she'll tease me all the time. She'll be like, "When are you gonna take me out to wear this thing?" Because you know, she didn't get to wear it, and I'm like, "We'll save it for the next one." So we'll just, uh, um, yeah. They yeah, they were all about they were all about you know fashion and that kind of stuff. It was weird. I, I don't know. If, I don't know of another act where it was just like one guy and the rest were girls. Right. Oh, you're totally it. outnumbered, man. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. So, yeah. It's usually like the other way around or something. But yeah, man, they were always about. You know, just an hour to put on makeup, you know, which you know, you know, women should be, you know, whatever. Right. But it was, it was, it was a different experience traveling with not only my wife but just another female. So, oh no, I, uh, yeah, I they saw were them about everything I wasn't. I saw them backstage at the Valde Grand Opera House where they've got that really um, beautiful vanity, you know, back there with the with, oh, yeah, with the stage sure. lights. Oh, and they were they were doing yeah. it up, looking fancy. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> very cool. Well, man, yeah, I, I, I have a picture online of them just going back there and. I'm putting on makeup, but I'm just standing there with my arms crossed, like I'm, I'm already done. I'm done getting ready. I'm ready. I'm ready to go on stage. <laughs> well, hey, one more question about the uh, the award show. Uh, just say we were having it all there. Uh, was there anybody you were looking forward to hanging out with, getting some FaceTime with, just kind of you know having a few drinks with, or you know maybe in any um, musicians that you you know you were kind of looking forward to maybe getting to know or you know network with? Yeah, honestly, well. I- I mean, you know, just, you know, radio people, first of all, like, you know, just you and all the other guys that we, I mean, we, you live like 11 hours away from us, so mm-hmm. it's not, it's not like it's a hop, skip, and a jump away, but uh, that, and then, uh, man, we were in the, we were in the future faces though with uh, Grant Gilbert, but we had met him, and we kind of exchanged contact info last time that we were at the Opera House with you, right, yeah. where we had met him initially, and uh, we were looking forward to maybe sitting down and doing some songwriting and stuff at the hotel later, and, um, you know, that kind of stuff, but it was a, uh, you know, I haven't really talked to him much since then, so it was just kind of like a missed opportunity to just kind of hang out with a lot of musicians. Isaac was another one. Like I said, we uh, were really good friends with that dude. Um, and uh, But, I mean, the whole thing was just kind of, you know, like you like said earlier, it, it is what it is. And, uh, yeah. you know, that we were bummed to kind of miss the, the whole thing, and it kept getting pushed back, and then, I mean, finally just happened. So Hey, you know but, what? Uh, As a lifelong Cowboy fan, I have no problem saying there's always next year. So. <laughs> always next year, man. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Well, again, we are live on the virtual blue carpet T3R Awards with Sam Cox. Um, I, I, I want to say formally of Ragland, but we'll just say, you know, right. of Ragland and the new uh, re the renewed Sam uh, Cox band. So let's go ahead and play your new song before we wrap it up, man. Um, it's called you, man. Losing Someone. Give me the quick background on this song and we'll get it on the air. Okay, so um, yeah, I started writing it. Um, maybe like a, a couple of years ago. And uh, just, you know, the song vividly walks you through the um, 
the stages of kind of just like losing somebody. Um, and it, it was wrote about a breakup that had happened a long time ago, mm-hmm. but then I had finished it here recently because um, it, it sounds like it's about a breakup, but it's, it's really just about we didn't know whether or not we were going to be able to keep our foster kiddo because we're in the middle of trying to adopt. And it, the whole situation was just kind of a, um, a heartbreaking thing, which, uh-huh. you know, things are looking up now. But, um, this, you know, it's just about losing somebody, whether it's a you know, breakup or um you know, just uh, legally, or, you know, um, I, somebody told me the other day that they had the song on repeat because it reminded them of their grandma that had just passed away. So right, I was like, yeah. okay, that's cool that people can take it in different ways. So um, it's just a, it's kind of a it's kind of a tearjerker, but, uh, you know, so that's kind of the sort of behind it. Well, and quickly before we play it, the Sam Cox Band, um, give us a quick uh, background on the other guys in the group since we don't know them yet. Oh, no, you're good. Okay, so... Um, we all grew up around the uh, Tahlequah, Pryor, Oklahoma area. Um, the bassist is Hunter Raglan, which is Autumn's brother, okay, my brother in law. And then, um, <laughs> and then uh, Josh and Ethan, they are the guitarist and the drummer, and they're both from Pryor, Oklahoma. And we're um, they're all about you know our age, you know, mid twenties, and uh, they're, they're they're cool dudes, good looking dudes, and he's uh, good. Check them out. We got a you know new music coming out here pretty soon, so we're um, pretty stoked about it. And where, where can we find you guys online? SamCoxBand.com. Very cool. All right, so go check it out. I know you guys have some koozies and some merch up there as well. So, again, SamCoxBand.com. Again, Sam Cox here, Ragland and Sam Cox Band uh, at the T3R Virtual Texas Regional Radio Music Awards, uh, brought to you locally by First State Bank of Uvalde, uh, Bottle and Bag Liquor and Guns, Uvalco Supply, Julian's, Cadillac Western Wear, and more that I'll mention in a minute. But right now, let's get into the song, Sam Cox Band, Losing Someone. This is UvaldeRadio.net. Thank you, sir. Appreciate you, man. Yeah, you bet, man. You wake up. Feet at the floor, a ton of bricks. It's you right on cue. For a split moment, you weren't thinking of them, but now you are. And now your day's through again. And the worst part about losing someone is this part. Cause sometimes you're high And other times So no one can see you cry And you'll pull over on the side of the road And find yourself wiping your eyes Again And the worst part About losing some this part You ask yourself Do you try Harder Do you just let it go To pick up What's left of Your heart This It's you right on cue. Uvalde Radio, redefining radio in Uvalde, Texas. It's the biggest night in Texas country at the 10th Annual Texas Regional Radio Music Awards with UvaldeRadio.net. Boy, 
boys throwing back that last beer Girls touching up makeup in the side mirror Budweiser sign shining like Vegas A five dollar bill got you through that front door Cowboy hat got you out on the dance floor And he'd be off to the races If I could turn back the pages There'd be sticks and stones, Tracy Lawrence Two-tone Ford with the long bed on it Number on a napkin and an old pay phone Lighting up smoke till the lights came on, yeah Two-stepping through those neon lights With a girl in boots and tight Levi's If I could go back in time, you'd find me At some old bar in the night Table, setting up a shot for a blue-eyed angel Old John Michael set you up for a slow dance While your buddy stood around talking Braves and Earnhardt You were out there trying to steal that girl's heart Feels like a world away But I say the good old days The sticks and stones, Tracy Lawrence A two-tone Ford with the long bed on And stones, Tracy Lawrence, a two tone Ford with the long bed on it, number on a napkin and an old payphone, lighting up smokes till the lights came on. Yeah, two stepping through those neon lights with the girl in boots and tight Levi's. If I could go back in time, you'd find me at some old bar in the night. It's the biggest nights in Texas country at the 10th Annual Texas Regional Radio Music Awards with UvaldiRadio.net. UvaldiRadio.net, I am Robert Miguel once again coming at you virtually live from the 10th Annual T3R Awards on the blue carpet, in uh, a virtual blue carpet in honor of law enforcement. Uh, our live coverage is brought to you by Texas Farm Store, DKM Enterprises, and Cena Properties, the Uvalde Convention and Visitors Bureau. Uh, visit UvaldiCounty.com, First State Bank of Uvalde, uh, Bottle and Bag Liquor and Guns, Julian's, uh, Cadillac Western Wear, and Uvalco Supply. So, got the business out of the way. And with me on the virtual blue carpet, the lovely, talented, very classy uh, <laughs> Jenny DeLord. Robert, you are so sweet. I can just eat you up. Thank you so much. Well, all right. Excellent. Man, well, everybody knows that you're like my music crush. So, you know, that that's no secret around here. <laughs> but, man. Well, I mean, I don't know if that's true, but I, I will take it. I appreciate that. <laughs> so, so we're really excited because, uh, first of all, I've, I haven't talked to you for a while. Um, we, did, we did a little chat, I guess, in the middle of the COVID crap, uh, which we're kind of still in now, I guess. But the last time I actually saw you was when I met you at the last... T three R awards. So uh, let's go ahead and take a virtual rewind uh, back to the uh, the awards last March. And when I say last March, I mean March of twenty nineteen. Um, right. And, and that experience for you, you were up for what um, was it? New female vocalist, or what were you up for back then? Yes, yes. Last year it was new female vocalist of the year. And uh, and what else? What else did you dabble in? What, what, what was your overall experience in twenty nineteen? Well, I mean, I really loved the award ceremony. Like it's like you said, it was the first time I got to meet, and I, I remember uh, we had the fashion walk. And, yes. 
you know, we got critiqued on our dresses, which was really <laughs> intimidating, but really awesome all at the same time. <laughs> and, uh, man, I'm, you know, it, it was just really awesome to get to meet everybody and just be in the same room with some of my heroes and, and everything. And, man, it, it was just amazing. Now, last year, my co-host was the lovely and talented Summer Ayala, um, and uh, yes. she, she was a, kind of a, works with a Mirakai model agency uh, in the East Dallas area. This year, I had plans to have Leslie Gensel, who actually is a boutique owner. Um, she has Downtown Society. And um, we're all geared up, you know, and then we, we went virtual. So I'm going to do my best to talk about the fashion. So Jenny Dale Lord, here on the virtual blue carpet, in, in real life, IRL, what are you wearing right now? <laughs> in real life, I am in uh, jeans and a, it's, it's cold in, in Lubbock, Texas today. So I'm in a long sleeve t-shirt that says, I'd rather be someone's shot of whiskey than everyone's cup of tea. <laughs> nice. Okay. Okay. So now here we go. <laughs> Bippity boppity boop. Boom. Now you're Cinderella and you're all gussied up for the awards. Now, what are you wearing virtually? <laughs> I am wearing a lace cream floor length dress a sleeveless because you know march it's kind of uh warm mm-hmm. you didn't want to get too hot with okay. a pair of brown cowboy boots and some turquoise jewelry and a brown belt with a turquoise silver really cool buckle so definitely going for the cowboy chic uh, leather and lace sort of vibe absolutely now that was very specific. So that's a real that's a real outfit, right? You had it all laid out, didn't you? Oh yeah, no, I totally own that dress. <laughs> I even did my virtual acceptance speech in that dress. <laughs> well, that... you know, I was like, oh, if I'm going to get critiqued on my fashion in this year, I got I got to find something awesome. <laughs> that that yeah. is so cool. I mean, um, you know, I, I really wish we could all see each other. Like, you know, you know and, and especially because. You know, when somebody, most of the time we see you guys on stage and you're, you're kind of working, you know, and you might be even a a little road weary. And then the other times we really get to get those radio visits. But even then, you know, you're fresh from a bus, you know what I mean? Or, or it's a morning show and, and the jocks are all just kind of like, you know, it's obvious why we're in radio. So, you know, it's a really good opportunity for everybody to see each other kind of off work and at their best, you know? So it's neat to see everybody all you know, looking fine and fresh. So if you were able to do it, if this was not a virtual thing, uh, what were you most looking forward to as far as like, you know, rubbing elbows with people and or who you wanted to hang out with or maybe network with? Well, you know, honestly, I, I, I didn't have anyone in particular in mind. I really just enjoyed the overall environment. I got to meet so many great people. You know, I got to meet you and Summer. And, you know, I was sitting right behind Randy Rogers and Wade Bowen and uh, just had such a really good time being in the same room with everybody. And that's something that, you know, being from Lubbock, I I think I I might win the award for farthest away from everybody else (laughs) because, you know, Lubbock is just kind of out there. And so I don't really feel like I get the opportunity to even run in the same circles as everybody who's only like two, three, four hours away from everybody. So I just really was just looking forward to that experience in general. And I was bring like a whole crew of people with me my my friends and then my friends that, uh-huh. have, that have become family and we just had such a great time last year and i just really wanted to re- recreate it i didn't like i said no, nothing in specific particular in mind but just just to enjoy the moment again well now you know what uh, i mean we're we're pretty far removed as well too we're way out here in the you know the armpit of south texas so uh i, I just like getting up there to because i'm a dallas kid you know I, I graduated at irving high school so those are my stomping grounds over there um yeah. so yeah but uh but yeah i was obviously looking forward to it too um so let's talk about the last year and i want to say year it's really kind of year and a half at this point um you were nominated again for 2020 uh, female vocalist of the year, not new female, but now legit straight up female Vox. So you, yeah, I, you're guess, the, I guess two, two or three years of new female is all you're allowed. And then you get, you're no longer new. You're like, I'm glad they don't call it old female though. You know? <laughs> right. at, least, at least it's just female. <laughs> well, I mean, if, if, if they called it old, that would make Brie like geriatric. <laughs> so, <laughs> and, and I mean, by the number of awards. <laughs> her. No, of course. And congratulations to her. Uh, I honestly, I think I would have been more surprised if she didn't win than anything else because she is just 
phenomenal. I'm, I'm a big Brie fan, and, and and she's awesome. Right. No. Yeah. Something would have to be weird if she was nominated and did not win in that category. Exactly. Because I mean, last year Sarah won, but that's because Brie wasn't nominated. Right. She was nominated for Entertainer of the Year, um, as I recall. Right. So. So anyway, you had some really, and I hate using the word competition, but you had some some. Big competition. You had Brie, obviously, Holly Tucker, uh, Jade oh, Marie, yeah. and Sarah Hobbs, who was last year's um, winner. Are those your running buddies? Are, are, are they yeah, gal pals? Well, and I, that's exactly what I try to tell you. The only one I've even like had any conversations with at all would be Brie. Uh, but like I said, being in Lubbock, yes, you, you may be. You're close to San Antonio. You're close to Austin. You're close to all these places. I'm in the middle of nowhere. Like <laughs> Dallas is actually the closest to me, so I haven't really gotten to to have a lot of those girls in my circles. But I will tell you that I, I have written a, a girl-girl duet for my next album that I'm going to be calling up all these girls and seeing who would be willing to sing a song with me because <laughs> I just think it would be amazing. I would love I would love to be friends with all of those ladies, and they are all so good. They are all so good. Well, tell, tell me this now. I mean, obviously, you're, you're not really personal friends with any of them, but is there any particular one of those ladies that you just really, like, their work really resonates with you? I mean, I'd be lying if I said it wasn't Brie like uh-huh. I mean, her last song cheat on me mm-hmm. I think I could listen to that song like a million times and I've definitely felt that and I just I really l- love everything she does and that's what I was trying to tell you I, I think I would have been shocked if she didn't win because for me she's just awesome and what's funny is I've actually had people telling me about her since before I even knew about her in the Texas scene so she's resonated with a lot of my friends that I've been friends with for many many years and I'm glad that I'm familiar with her work and with her and I just I really admire her without a doubt well obviously you know her win is well deserved and your nomination as well too so just to be in that group that you know of those um five ladies is, is fantastic now you're get you got honor, this no doubt you got this nomination um, on the heels of, I guess, Reboot was the record you were working at the time still, right? Yeah, Reboot I had out last year, but then, you know, the the greatest accomplishment I've had during the pandemic is I put out a new record. Right, absolutely. So awesome. let's, let's get caught up on the new stuff. Um, the, the brand new record, the last time we spoke, it was almost out, and now it is officially out. So, um, and you, you had to... I remember you you said that you had to kind of cancel a big like album release party or at least postpone it or something yeah. like that. So I'm sure that's yeah. all gone down now. So how's how's the new record? What's the reception? Give me caught up. It's good. So our original release party was supposed to be on uh, May second, but that's right when everything like completely shut down. Mm-hmm. But then Texas opened up for like a couple weeks, and so it just opened up. I rescheduled it with my fingers crossed. Like, I'm going to try for June 20th, that life will be good, and everything's ready to go. Well, it just so happens that Texas opened up for, like, the couple weeks around that date. So we actually got to have our party, and we were very responsible. Nobody got sick. At least I don't re- – nobody's told me they got sick there, so I feel really good about that. But had a great party and a great release and, you know, put out a brand-new single – uh, a couple months ago off of it called He Loves Me More and the album is called Sometimes a Girl Needs the Blues and it was just really it was really amazing the party itself and we had people come in from all over the state and it was just it was awesome and it, every time I put out a new album I, I keep trying to think how I'm going to do better than the one before and that includes the party and everything and I don't know I've definitely got something to live up to for the next one so now now as far as the, the latest record Sometimes a Girl Needs the Blues and you, again you got the current single um, which is called uh, He Loves Me More. Um, are, do you feel like this is going to have some legs, going to release a few singles off of it, or are you going to get right back in the studio and try to get something new? Well, I, I, I'm hoping to do a combination of both, actually. So one of my dearest friends uh, just passed away from brain cancer a few weeks ago, mm. uh, and before she died, she asked me to write her a song, and it's actually a song that I've already gone to the studio and recorded because so many of the people in our world want a copy of it, and I think it's a song that will resonate well with, with everybody and especially what we're going through or just life in general it's uh-huh. it's not a sad song it's a live life to the fullest kind of song and i think that that's something many of us can relate to so i'm teetering around with the idea of going ahead and releasing that as a single once i'm finished with the whole process or sticking to the old album or it's not even that old it's just a couple months old right <laughs> uh, going back and forth but you know one thing that all this downtime has left me with is I want to keep being creative and I want to keep doing it. And when I'm not allowed to go out and tour and I can't go do this, for me, the best thing to do is to just go spend some time in the studio, write some songs, get some stuff done. So I'm really trying to take advantage of this down period and uh, make some new music. So I, I hope I like to think that I will be able to do 
any of the things that you suggested uh, when the time comes. Well, very good. Again, we're talking to Jenny Dale Lord out of Lubbock, Texas, uh, here on the virtual blue carpet, uh, celebrating the 10th annual T3R Awards. That's Texas Regional Radio uh, uh, Music Awards. And uh, again, we're doing it virtually. So Jenny is on the phone over there in her in her awesome, um, you know, gala event gown. <laughs> so, <laughs> right. But but uh, here's another. We got to touch on this because we're excited. You are going to be in Uvalde in November. How exciting is this? Yeah. It is so exciting. It is so exciting. Uh, I've been wanting to, to make that way down there for a long time, and I love Friendsgiving. I think that whole thing sounds phenomenal, and uh, I could not be more excited to come hang out with you guys for a night. Uh, November 19th, Thursday night, uh, Broadway 730, right? So it's it's, it's, uh, it's actually um, Broadway 830, because that's our, our area go down here. Sorry. Broadway 830, yeah, and that's going to be on, uh, what, Thursday, November 19th, which is one week before Thanksgiving, hence the name Friendsgiving, and if you saw the poster, yeah, it's got a little kind of a Friends theme, um, and it says the one with pizza, beer, and Jenny Dale Lord. That's our episode. So, Which, uh, honestly, my favorite any holiday is with pizza and beer. So <laughs> that's good for me. So yes, yeah, so, so we're gonna get to enjoy some delicious artisan pizza, cold craft beer, and live music with you on our lovely um, outdoor courtyard here in beautiful downtown Uvalde. So you'll be able to kind of see what we're all about. Um, how far down this way have you been before? Uh, well, I mean, I actually play in South Padre Island okay. uh, every year. So that's the farthest south I've been. But usually I kind of stop around San Antonio. Uh, right. Yeah, so we're just a little southwest. You're making your way a little bit further out this way. Um, what do you, Are you going to be in, in our general area during that you know, week or two? Um, what, what, what are you, um, I guess, what's your, your touring itinerary look like? Well, yeah, I'm actually going to be in High, Texas on the 20th at oh. William Chris Winery from like 1230 to 430. So that's, Uvalde's only like a couple hours away. So I was really excited to make it down that way and then head back up to High. Very cool, man. You're going to have some beer and pizza one day and then wine the next. Good times. I mean, I'm an equal opportunity drinker, so whiskey, <laughs> wine, beer, it all sounds delicious. I'm, I'm in it, I'm for sure. <laughs> well, again, everybody make plans. Again, that's Thursday, November 19th at Broadway 830 at, uh, right there in the heart of downtown Uvalde. It's going to be a good time from 7 to 10 p.m. with Jenny. And then, of course, we'll we'll do some uh, interview, uh, radio interview stuff with you as well, too. So, uh, man, Jenny, it's been really, really cool catching up with you. Uh, you know, since we're doing the award thing, I, you know, the tendency would be to play one of the you know the older hit songs that you're nominated on, but you know what, man, this new record's good. Let's play the new thing. Is that okay? I man, I would be so grateful. Thank you so much. And I, we put out a new music video for that too. So if you haven't checked out the music video, it's pretty fun. Well, so quick, give us the the, the quick. Or two. Give us the quick, um, I guess, introduction or explanation about "He Loves Me More" and what it is, you know, as far as the song goes. Well, the thing I like about the timing of "He Loves Me More," which is totally unintentional, was that it, you know, it came out like while the pandemic was happening. And if there's anything I learned during the pandemic, it's like you can spend too much time with somebody. <laughs> right. So, uh, "He Loves Me More" is basically about like how can I miss you when you're never gone, sort of a thing. So. It's it's just meant to be tongue in cheek, but I think we can all relate to it after being stuck in the house with somebody for months and months and months and months. I mean, I tell you what, a cool song. I really love the arrangement. That intro is so cool. So there's a lot of cool, fun musical things about this track. Real quick, let me thank our sponsors again. Texas Farm Store, DKM Enterprises, and Cena Properties, and Uvalde Convention Visitors Bureau. I'll get the next uh, batch of uh, sponsors here in a minute. But right now, let's get back into the music from the uh, virtual blue carpet. Texas Regional Radio Music. It's such a, such a mouthful. T3R, Texas Regional Radio Music Awards, 10th Annual. Jenny Dale Lord, thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I'm glad we both had a little tongue twister there. I was feeling really bad for it. <laughs> right. Well, you look and sound smashing, and here it is. He loves me more. Jenny Dale Lord, this is Uvalde Radio.net. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. He loves me more. He loves me more. He loves me more when I'm gone Somehow I think this world ain't wrong Keeping me so far from home Cause there ain't nothing like my keys still in the door And our clothes are on the floor catching up on nothing I tell you boy it sure is something Enough to keep me hanging on He loves me more First we found it kind of hard All the time we spent apart 
something about a brand new love that you just can't get no every time we say goodbye there be tears in both our eyes fast for 10 years down the road and he can't wait for me to go he loves me more Stay back is pretty nice He makes me breakfast once or twice Says some sweet words here and there Runs his fingers through my hair But by day three it starts to change We both start acting kind of strange But by then it's time to leave We kiss goodbye and say love He loves me more when I'm gone So how I think this road ain't wrong Keeping me so far from home Cause there ain't nothing like my key still in the door And our clothes all on the floor catching up on loving I tell you boy it sure is something Enough to keep me hanging on Fighting radio in Uvalde, Texas. It's the biggest night in Texas country at the 10th Annual Texas Regional Radio Music Awards with UvaldeRadio.net. Just trying to figure things out Taking me a heartbreak She hit me like a Mack truck When she done me how she did me Might as well have doused me in diesel Struck a match And just let me I'm taking me a heartbreak Yeah, I'm taking me a heartbreak yeah. This heart can take a beating Tough as nails Choose to be in hammer on But this time it's bleeding half It's taking everything I have To be strong on so I'm taking me a heartbreak I might go back home to mama I might drive across the country In my old truck Just taking me a heartbreak I 
might take a little time to heal Hell, I've got a little time to kill Well, damn my luck I'm taking me a heartbreak This heart can take a beating Tough as nails Juice to be in hammer on This time it's split in half It's taking everything I have to be strong on Yeah, so I'm taking me a hard break I'm just taking me a hard break It's the biggest nights in Texas country at the 10th annual Texas Regional Radio Music Awards with UvaldiRadio.net. It's UvaldiRadio.net. It's Robert McGill coming at you live virtually from the 10th annual T3R Awards. That's the Texas Regional Radio Music Awards. Uh, and it's brought to you locally by uh, Uvalde. I'm sorry. Visit UvaldiCounty.com, First State Bank of Uvalde, Bottle and Bag Liquor and Guns, Julian's, Uvalco Supply, and Cadillac Western Wear. Cadillac Western Wear, who supplied my awesome virtual blue carpet outfit. I'm looking pretty fly for a brown guy. And uh, this guy, with me here on the virtual blue carpet, John Stark! Man. How are you doing, man? Dude, Dude, it's good to be here with you. It's very cool to be here virtually with you too, sir. Now, what are you doing in the real world right now? Are you what are you you doing some honeydews? Oh, you already know it. Uh, <laughs> right before I have to hit the road again and and uh, get on to the next the next spot. But you got to have clean laundry before you can do that, and it doesn't hurt to uh, catch up on your honeydews. <laughs> before you head out of the house as well. Now, now tell me this, John. I know you're a happily married man. You, every time we've talked to you, you always brag about your lovely wife. Uh, is she there in the house right now, or is she out doing something else? She, she actually just hit the door. She had to uh, run into Houston real quick um, to actually stop by the office. But she's been working from home, and uh, she's been loving it, and uh, and also maybe maybe not so loving it at, at <laughs> right. some time. But, well, man, now, now tell me this. Now, where are you guys based out of again? South of Houston, just okay. south of Houston on the uh, the outside of the loop, just far enough out to, to not have too much crazy. But we still catch our fair share. Well, now, man, you got to be really excited because, I mean, you're relatively new to the Texas country music scene as far as, like, you know, the, the big storm you took us by in 2019 and here in 2020. Um, but um, you got nominated for um, Best New Male Vocalist of the Year, right? Yes, sir. And uh, you had some really great, um, some really great competition in there. So you had to feel a little, you know. I mean, Clay Hollis, Drew Fish, Frank Ray, Jeff Claiborne, yourself, and uh, Tanner Fenog- uh, Fenoglio. Um, so, do you run with any of those guys? Have you gigged with them, or are you good I, friends with any of those buddies? I've actually known Drew uh, the longest, and that was actually when I, I first dropped. Um, any music whatsoever. The first songs that I ever put out, uh, I was actually with Drew the day that they came out. Um, so I've known Drew for quite some time, and uh, I've known Clay for quite some time as well, and we've gone hunting and, and uh, gotten to kick around for a while. I haven't had the opportunity to, to hang out with the rest of the list, but, no. man, that, it's some some definite talent on that list, man. You can't argue that whatsoever. Um, so I just feeling super blessed and uh, fortunate to share the share the light with those those fine folks 
Well, I got to say this, man, as far as the new male vocalist of the year category, I, I got to say, at least in my experience in Texas country, this is one of the most di- diverse sounding uh, group of guys that I think we've had in a few years. As far as like you guys all have a very distinct kind of thing going on. Would you would you agree to that? Absolutely. The, the, the list, again, is just stacked with talent. Uh, we have had one heck of a year, one heck of, uh, uh, I would say, We'll just lump last year and this year All right. together uh, because, you know, it's been it's been one big blur, and we've had one heck of a time in Texas music, period. Well, man, I mean, obviously it has been a good year. You you um ha- were actually able to come down and visit us here in Uvalde, and we had some pizza and some beer and some live stuff over at Broadway a 3 so we're looking forward to, to seeing that, too. Um, what are some of the highlights, I guess, um, that you've experienced as far as the live shows or just, you know, chart positions on your on your singles? I, I, look, I, I went into this whole thing uh, just wanting to release some music that that I would want to hear out on the radio, um, something that I would enjoy listening to. Uh, it, that's the best way I can put that. But you know, the melodies and the sound and and what we were trying to create. Uh, I was also hoping that some folks would actually enjoy it and that might actually like it as well. But. I wasn't anticipating any of this, Robert, to be completely <laughs> honest. Uh, if you would have told me we were going to be having this conversation when we were having pizza and beers uh, <laughs> when I came out and yeah. played in Uvalde, I probably would have laughed. Uh, but, you know, we're just I'm just trying to do uh, what I want to hear. I'm trying to be the change I, I want to hear. Well, man, very cool. The record is uh, insanely good, man. Uh, Radio Cowboy, the, uh, the the release you put out. And on that, you had, what, Facts and Lies, you had uh, Radio Cowboy, and then currently you've got Another Town. Am I missing any singles there that you've currently put that's, out? That's, that is exactly where we're at right now. And, uh, and I, I don't know what we're going to put out next, if it'll be something brand new uh, that we're currently working on or if it'll be something from the Radio Cowboy album. Uh, there's really no telling. Uh, and, and you never know what I'm going to do next because it's too hard to guess. You know, and for those listening at home, I, we didn't really say this, but you won. Yeah, you are the uh, best new male vocalist of the year for the T3R Award. So congratulations, John Storr. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank yeah. you very much, man. I uh, I was there last year when they, when they uh, announced Randall King, and I thought that was more than well-deserved. And uh, since then, I've talked to Randall and became... Uh, long distance friends because we're always passing each other on the road somewhere uh-huh. somehow but uh yeah I, I i'm a little taken back once again and just feel really blessed and overwhelmed i know i'm still still the new guy in a lot of ways and in more than one for sure but uh you know just want to keep on playing music and and do what we're supposed to do uh, do what we set out to do in the first place and that was just to make good music well, man, it's a great record. Again, we're talking to John Stork here on the virtual blue carpet in honor of law enforcement at the virtual T3R Awards 10th Annual, uh, brought to you locally by Texas Farm Store, DKM Enterprises, Encina Properties, and the Valley Convention and Visitors Bureau. Now, John, we, we'd like you said, we didn't get to go to the uh, award ceremony. I've been talking to all my guests here on the blue carpet. Um, I, you you have some good country fashion. I like kind of your denim thing you usually have going on in your uh, in your promo pics. And I know that you said that your your wife actually designed your album cover jacket. Uh, did you have anything oh, yeah. special in the wardrobe picked out for the gala event that you would have been wearing? What kind of fashion would you be showing off? I did, I did, <laughs> and I actually have a uh, a solid nineteen. I want to say early seventies, nineteen early seventies Sears and Roebuck. Um, leather jacket that, nice. that I had um, wanted to wear last year but ended up having to take it off and uh, it was a little snug and we were we were sitting real pretty for this year though Robert I'll tell you right now man this thing fit no pun intended like a leather glove nice. so uh, man it was gorgeous and, and we were uh, we were all ready with the brush popper and uh, and the starch blue jeans but you know it is what it is. Next year, it, it will we'll blow it out of the water. And I know everybody's showing up next year in person. 
they're going to be dressed to the nines. I know Rita Ballou said she uh, she had her high heels picked out <laughs> yes, ready to go. She did. <laughs> uh, so many people. So many people. And I wish I could have seen what you were going to be sporting because I know it w- wouldn't have been anything short of magnificent. So. Oh, man. Hey, man. I, don't get me wrong. I got some vintage Sears catalog gear as well. Actually, my wardrobe was uh, furnished by Cadillac Western Wear here in Uvalde, and I will be showing that off sometime soon virtually. But, hey, uh, man, John, t- tell me this, man. I'm sure you would have... Uh, your your plus one would have been your wife. Did she have some kind of awesome gala gown picked out, or has she not oh, got that far yet? Which one? Oh, which wife or which? <laughs> no, no, which, oh, well, I'm sorry, which dress? Oh, uh, yeah, I'm saying, no. did, did she have a dress picked like out for the big event? <laughs> she did. She, I, that's why I said which one, uh, and then I realized it sounded like I was talking about a different <laughs> wife. But, yeah, she had a couple different outfits picked out ready to go, and we really thought, um, we really thought after the first um, cancellation or, or, you know, temporary shutdown of the award show that they would reschedule and so on and so forth. But, uh, you know, everything happens for a reason. We're going to come back next year. We're all going to get together. It's all going to be that much sweeter. And, uh, hey, maybe this year's clothing options for some people just weren't supposed to happen. Right. Maybe, maybe they were just that bad. And uh, and that's why we couldn't get together in person. I don't know. Maybe next year everybody will be dressed even better. Well, man, I, I gained the COVID nineteen, so I'm gonna have to give me a, you know a couple of plus sizes, or or just get get like you and slim down a bit, to fit into that good stuff. Hey, <laughs> but uh, man, easy, but you know, um, like, we're working on it. That's for sure. Well, John, it's been really cool catching up with you. Thank you for joining us here on the virtual blue carpet at the 10th Annual T3R Awards. Congratulations again. New Male Vocalist of the Year. Fantastic job, man. Great record. And I guess, um, let's, I know you've got a current single, um, Another Town that we've been playing, but since we're kind of doing this in honor of 2019, um, go ahead and tell me what you, you want, me, want me to do, uh, Radio Cowboy or, uh, Facts and Lies? Man, go ahead and, and do. Play some facts and lies. That was our first number one in the state of Texas. So uh, let's let's bring it back to the one that started it. Yep, the one that started it all. John Stork right here on the T3R Awards. This is UvaldeRadio.net. Thank you, John. Appreciate you, man. Thank you, Robert. Have a great one. Build a farm and man bakes his hay when the sun shines. Little boys cry for mama when they do cry. Fast horses would a cowboy wants And my granddad died for the flag Airplanes fly and airplanes crash And everybody came to play quarterback You can't have a smoke if you ain't got a light Baby, that's a fact now here's a lie I was out at the bar with the boys last night I didn't pick up cause my phone died Cross town wrapped up tight And bed sheets, candles, and wine It's been a month, the sun is working over time I miss you too, and I ain't trying to put you on You still turn me on, and I ain't got nothing to hide That's a fact Here's your life It's a painting with little white lines And it's a fact, Cracker Jack's always come with a prize Cash war black, well it gets high And that Liberty Bell's got a crack down the side And man, that ain't no lie Like I was out at the bar with the boys last night I didn't pick up cause my phone died I was across town, wrapped up tight In bed sheets, candles, or wine the sun is working overtime I miss you too And I ain't trying to put you on You still turn me on And I ain't got nothing to hide That's a fact There's your life Who was 
Uvalde Valley Radio, redefining radio in Uvalde, Texas. Coverage from the Texas Regional Radio Music Awards is presented by Bottle and Bag Liquor and Guns, DKM Enterprises, Encina Properties, First State Bank of Uvalde, Julian's, Texas Farm Store, Texas Hill Country River Region, Uvalco Supply, and the Uvalde Convention and Visitors Bureau.